Hey, welcome to episode 70 of the Gig Life Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie Taylor. I hope you enjoy the show. My guest today is Carmel Masiti. Carmel was a vocalist and singing teacher from Sydney. She's sung for many of Australia's greats, including Marsha Hines, Delta Goodrum, Human Nature, Christina New, Spud Murphy, Courtney Act, Steve Belby, Doug Parkinson, Angry Anderson, Vanessa Amorosi, and many, many more, as well as performing on television shows such as Australian Idol, Mornings with Kerry Ann Kennelly, Midday with Ray Martin, and In Sydney Today, amongst others. Carmel was a vocal teacher at AIM and has her own singing school called The Singing Room, as well as her band Soul Play. I caught up with Carmel mid-December last year, leading into Christmas. We chatted about growing up in an Italian family, being plucked from a shopping centre talent quest by Jennifer and Spud Murphy and asked to join the cast of the Burning Log Theatre Restaurant, which ran for a number of years and from that many opportunities would present themselves. We talked about what it takes to become a certified vocal coach, her long-time gig with Doug Parkinson, up-and-coming singer talent, and a whole lot more. Really cool hang. Hope you dig it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Carmel Mercedes. Cheers. All right, I think we're rolling. Okay. Carmel Masiti, welcome to the Good Life Podcast. Stevie Taylor, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, thank you for having me in your house. Oh, Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for coming along. Before I hit record, I, I just asked you how to pronounce your name, and mm-hmm. I thought it was Masetti. Mm-hmm. Um, you said there's a few ways that people pronounce it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to uh, be teased sometimes in uh, primary school. But I'm okay now. I'm all right. They used to call me Mercedes Benz. Mercedes. Anyway. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. But it is. It's Masiti. Masiti. So I've had Masetti. There's many variations out there. Right. It's Masiti. For the, for the last <laughs> few weeks leading up to this, um, I thought it was Masetti. There you go. There you go. Yep. There I go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> No, Miss Edie. Yeah, that's but you can call me Miss Edie. I don't mind. No, no, I'll call Miss Edie. <laughs> Miss Edie. Um, yes. So Italian. Italiano. Yes. Were you born in Australia? I was born here. Yeah. Okay. Your mother and father from Italy, or was it another generation? No, generation before them. Yep. So they were actually born here, um, and my grandparents were from Calabria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, we're a very big Italian family, both sides, mum and dad, Italian, mm-hmm. um, lots of uh, uh, Christmases. and. I was going to say because we're, <laughs> we're a couple of weeks out. Well, by the time this comes out, Christmas mm-hmm. probably has, has passed, but okay. we're a couple of weeks out. So how's the prepara- what's the preparation for, for big Christmases? Well, you do it all in one day. We used between the to. Fam- between the families? Yeah, we used to do that. Um, mm. Before we had uh, children of our own, I have two boys now, so it's all we go to my mum's. Um, my parents are uh, not together. So we usually just all 
pitch in and help mum right. at her house yep. um, in the inner west. And, yeah, the, I've got two other sisters mm-hmm. and they have kids too. So mm-hmm. we all just go to Nana's, yeah, cool. <laughs> Nana's house and, and she cooks up a feast and we all, after a few hours, lie down and just... Uh, food coma. Food coma. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but it's great. It's just all about the kids. Yeah, that's cool. You know, yeah. Mm. Awesome. Mm. So how's um, <clears throat> how's gig life, work life leading up into this Christmas season? Are you doing a lot of corporate stuff this time of year? Are you in that corporate scene? Yeah, I mm-hmm. am in that corporate scene. However, <laughs> if I may be really brutally honest it's a little bit quiet actually this month I've had um a few uh months leading up to this where it's been busy so um yeah it's it's kind of on the quiet side Mm -hmm. but uh that's okay I'm enjoying a little bit of I've just recently moved so I'm enjoying um just getting a bit of balance back and you know, what it's like moving, Yep. you know. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't worry. If you do that. <laughs> You're going to cut I'll that cut out. It. Cut it. It'll be oh, seamless. So Sorry. don't, don't, no, I was no, like, please. What no, the I fuck was, do I say? Here? I was about to ask, ask something then. So if you. Oh, sorry, I've just done your first little bit of work <laughs> there for you. I was hoping this would be an easy one. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, Jesus. I might leave I'm going, I've funny. got no corporate work. Actually, I'm actually not that busy. What do I say? Uh, I'll go. Oh, I okay. like being busy, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, wish I, was, I wish I was more busy, but I'm actually not. How right. funny. Right. That's, yeah. cool. That's cool. Hmm. All right. Well, let's roll back to. Um, early days, so we've kind of done a little bit of that there. Working worked out that your mum and dad are from here, and mm-hmm. your grandparents from from overseas. Now, as a as a young um, Carmel, were mm-hmm. you into music early? Is oh, your yes. do you have a musical family? Mum uh, and dad? No, actually, my mum and dad are not musical at all. But they, um, my mum in particular, had a real love of music. Actually, Dad as well, but um, so we we kind of grew up listening to and watching like Hey Hey at Saturday, um, you know John Farnham, uh, the Beatles, um, all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I just yeah that actually myself and my sisters all loved to sing, so we would sing all the time. Right. Um, so it was singing from the outset? Yeah, pretty much. I, actually, my earliest memory um, uh, for my, I guess, my passion for music and singing was uh, show and tell in uh, preschool. Mm. Uh, you had to take your favourite thing. So I, I, I distinctly remember making a microphone out of a toilet roll and I scrunched up a big... A chunk of foil and stuck it on the top of the oh, that's cool. toilet roll and, and went to preschool with this um, pretend microphone. Well, all the kids running up going, ice cream. <laughs> it looks like an ice cream. No. I can't remember that no. much, Stevie. <laughs> can't remember. I just remember definitely making that microphone and being that's cool. s- feeling so proud of myself. Look what I did, Mum. <laughs> you know. Who would have been that first um influence then that that made you want to do that mic who was who did you see on stage or, or video or holding a microphone that made you want to oh, go oh wow make that's a, a good question I actually don't remember that far back I just remember I loved I can't remember artists back then because you're talking uh maybe age four five mm-hmm. I can't remember artists but I just remember loving music I might have loved, you know, things like the Care Bears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just um, or even um, fairy tales or okay. um, nursery rhymes and things like that, okay. play school, things like that. But then, you know, get, getting older, being into, you know, I have really fond memories of John Farnham, Whitney Houston, mm. 
um, even Connie Francis. You know Connie Francis? No. Oh, oh wow. She was an American singer from the 50s and the 60s. My dad loved her. Okay. I don't know if my dad's going to listen to this, but, um, yeah, he uh, he definitely loved, adored her and Roy Orbison and all, all of the, the greats from the 50s and the 60s, mm-hmm. Elvis, you know, mm. yeah. Did you have like a listening room at home with a record player and that kind uh, of thing? We were, it was more so, yeah, so uh, records than cassettes. Mm. I'm just trying to remember yeah, yeah. way, way back I've had two children so it's like I'm trying to. Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> I walk around with That's constant <laughs> baby brain. Oh my goodness! Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> did you have like a uh, like? Did you a, see what I did there, Stevie? Yeah, you're putting was, it back on me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot I'm... my quit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> did you have like a listening room at home? Because my, my the reason I asked that is mm. at our place we had in the lounge room there was this big black cabinet and it had these glass doors and you open the doors. You slid out these boxes and all the LPs were in there and you oh, awesome. you know, you put on the record player and you put these massive headphones on, almost like pilots' headphones. Oh wow. Yeah. This is you, Did you have anything like that? Oh, um yeah, we had a record player. Mm. I remember it was a big probably from more so the eighties, you know, just the big black Yeah, yeah. With the clear lift, plastic top. Yeah, yeah lift yeah. the yep. plastic lid yep. and um George Michael, um, oh wow, this is this is a big stretch. Thinking about the eighties, yep. <laughs> George Michael yep. springs to mind. Yep, yeah. But yeah, no, we did. We we had um, a cool little uh, record player, and then yeah, then it was cassettes, right? Wasn't yep. it? Yeah, I, I yeah vaguely remember having mixing my own. Mixtapes and yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's cool. Um, so at what stage did you realize that I'm gonna take this singing thing a little bit more seriously and pursue it? Um, I think that uh, um, turning point for me was, um when I was entering Talent Quest, I did the t- Talent Quest circuit mm-hmm. um, in the clubs, actually. And so this is out of school. You're out of school at this stage, or are you? No, still I was still in, in school. school. Yep. Yeah, so I was um, studying or training at different performing arts schools, and um, you know, learning singing, dancing, acting, and uh, and they, you know, they recognise your talent and put you in talent quests and that kind of thing. So um, I did a lot of talent quests and I I remember entering a Stockland Mall talent quest out at Borkham Hills because I grew up in the Hills yep. area. Yep. Um, and I will never forget it was John Bowles. He was the MC uh, for the talent quest. I had a little crush on him for many years. Loved him and loved his voice, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the judges was uh, the amazing Jennifer Murphy. And um, I think I was maybe year 10 or 11. Um, I won the talent quest and uh, then stayed in touch with Jennifer and, of course, Spud Murphy, um, their team, um, married Spud was the um, uh, musical director for Channel 9 at the time and um, one of the morning programs. And they, yeah, they took me under their wing and that's when I started working professionally at the the Burning Log Theatre Restaurant, which was there. Um, Have you heard of? I've heard of that name. Yeah, Yeah. the Burning Log. So it was a a theatre restaurant. Right. um, uh, um, very, very successful and um, and I was very, very, so very, very fortunate to um, become part of the cast for uh, for the shows with them. So Right. So what yeah. sort of shows were they? Uh, they were um, 
it, it was um, theatre, so it was, uh, you know, not not cabaret, more so just fantastic medleys of um, um, music of the time and, um, you know, 50s, 60s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, and it was costume changes. It was a full three month uh, out of the year rehearsal period, mm. where we would rehearse every every day and just laugh and and um, dance. And we had choreographer cho- choreographers rather. Mm. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of how it started for me. Mm. Um, and how old were you when that? Theatre restaurant thing started? I think I was 16, 15. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So Very you, lucky. Yeah, Such right. A lucky, lucky girl um, to have uh, started my, I guess, my career in a professional theatre restaurant working with the best in the business, like Spud and, and Jennifer were mm. – um, and still are mentors to me. So, mm. yeah. Are they doing stuff now? Um, oh, well, uh, I'm not too sure. I think, well, Jennifer, yes, Jennifer was the head of the musical theatre department at the Institute of Music mm-hmm. and so was Spud. Mm-hmm. Um, Spud was involved in that. But Spud is also the musical director for Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which is. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so he's um, that's his that's his thing, and he was like I said, also um, musical director for one of the morning shows, Ernie and Denise, I think it was. Oh right, Spud, yes, uh, Ernie and Denise, yeah, remember that show? Yeah, yeah. I used to love Denise and Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> Denise, funny. So funny, so funny. And and Spud would be on piano and just gags and gags and gags. Yeah. Yeah, great, great entertainer, Mm. one of the best. So, Mm. yeah, very lucky. Yeah, cool. Mm. Um, Were you starting to do other gigs as well, pubs, Mm, clubs, that kind of thing? No, it was just still in this restaurant. No, that was my. And what about school? Full time. Um, Well, (laughs) I was, I guess, yeah, I was doing year 11 and 12 when, mm-hmm. or was it, I can't actually remember Stevie if it was 11 or 12, mm-hmm. um, but I remember it, it was study, taking my study books to rehearsals and, okay. yes, yeah, so it was kind of probably year 12. Um, uh, so, yeah, my, my all my friends from school would be, you know, studying or maybe working a day job or an afternoon job or something, and you were doing this, and I was doing this, and I. Awesome. But this was like my dream, you know, to just sing and um, um, share share the love of music, and I just remember feeling I was so excited every Friday and Saturday night because awesome. that's that was my that was my job. Showtime, every man. Yeah. yeah, every week. And yes, it was absolutely the best time. Yeah, mm. Mm. that's great. So yeah, I did Year Twelve and um, uh, rehearsing at the same time for mm. this this show. So mm. I did, I think, five or six seasons, which is uh, five or six years, I think. Yeah. Mm. So it was a big, big, big um, chunk. Yeah, yeah. Big yep. special time and mm-hmm. part of it's it still is to this day I just I just smile and feel very very grateful and blessed to have been part of that mm. that um show so mm. yes did you see it starting to come to an end it unfortunately closed down um okay. due to I think uh, maybe poor business um decisions from the owners of of the restaurant that had nothing to do with um, um, production. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was a big wake up call. <laughs> was it? A, was it and just a conversation one day? Them coming up and saying, "Look, we're we're done. You're going to finish out the season, or oh, you're done. 
there's no more get your stuff. And... If I recall, um, it was we had to we finished the season and then they shut the doors. So mm-hmm. that was a big. Um, a bit of a really, really horrible, sad, yeah, <laughs> stressful time for especially Spud and Jennifer, mm. um, and and everyone else who was uh, who they provided work for. So we were all out of a job, and um, you know it was a family. It was mm. definitely right um, a big family uh, with uh, you know previous cast members and. Um, the band, uh, production, lighting, yeah, it was very sad, dark mm. time. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what did you do to get yourself out of that dark time? Did you put yourself out there to sing in other bands and groups or did you try and find some other theatre stuff or um, did Spud and Jennifer find something else for you? I They were giving me, uh, again, so lucky I – they gave me recording studio um, opportunities. Oh, cool. um, but I remember I think I um, I just went into retail. I went, okay. uh, you know, I don't know what, what to do here. My parents were, you know, my dad was a rose farmer. Um, he was a good businessman but he didn't know about the industry that I was in. Mm. I didn't know much about the industry too. I was still, I was just a baby, Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, just yeah. still like a very naive and um, didn't know much mm. uh, about the business side of things. Um, so I think I remember taking a bit of time off and just working in retail. But I remember I wanted to go into music, <laughs> so I worked for Sanity. For, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. You remember Sanity? Are they yeah, still yeah, even I going? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that one, honestly. Yeah. But, yeah, so I worked in retail for a bit and mm. did some managerial roles, um, even in fashion. Mm. Uh, and then I got then I um, got back into it after a few years, I think. And how yeah. did that come about? Uh, again, just missing music and missing performing and missing um, singing. So. Um, was there ever that? Sorry. Was that's it, okay. Was there, like, once that theatre, because you'd been doing it for so long and it's what you knew, um, I would imagine it would kind of be like, you know, you guys had set yourself up in this little little box, this little ecosystem, and then all of a sudden it comes to an end. Come that time where you wanted to get back into it, did you feel, did you have the confidence to be able to get back out there? Oh, Does that make sense? That's a good question. Yes, I, mm. I, it totally makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, because when you're doing, um, when you're working every week and sometimes we would do seven shows uh, a week, so every night mm. uh, leading up to Christmas, um, yeah, it was a big, big shock. Um, uh yeah, I, I I honestly remember just feeling like I don't know what to do now. These mm. guys were my like almost like my parents and um, yeah yeah. So I I really had um, so uh, that that made you sort of go to re- retail. You went yeah, to the but I, when that time came to get back into music, did you feel you had the confidence to get back into a different? Different environment, different yeah. kind of band. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Yes, mm. yes. I started my own uh, little covers band. Oh, great. And worked with uh, a lot of just like-minded, um, passionate um, uh, musicians. Yep. And we recorded a demo, you know, um, went to the studio, recorded some um I was really into the brand new heavies. Oh, cool! You know they're so coming cool. here next year, eh? Yes. Did you see I that? I saw that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, and I think it's—is it Abstract Entertainment that are bringing them oh, out? I could be completely sure. wrong, Stevie. Not sure. I'm not sure either. But um, uh, but Dig is supporting them. Directions and Groove. They're, right. They're doing oh, a support wow. tour. And, yeah. Are you going? 
I would like to. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. go. But I, I noticed on the, the picture, um, I mean, it was only one, one website that I was looking at, but the drummer wasn't there. And the drummer is, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he was, you know, drummer, singer, um, as well as the other singers, of course. But mm. it just looked like it was the guitarist, the bass player and the, and the woman singer. Oh. Didn't look like he was there. Oh, so really? Do a okay. bit of research on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know them individually. You, you probably know them a little bit more than I not do. By, not but, by names. Yeah. <laughs> but I just remember loving the music. Yeah. And, you know, the vocals and the harmonies and the, the groove, yep. you know. Mm. So. Around, was, what, around what year was that, do you think? Uh, say 19... <sighs> Before 2000, so 1995, mm. yeah. 96, 97 was, possibly. Was, do you remember the album? Was it Shelter? No. Uh, can you rattle off any more names? Not of albums. I just remember that album, Shelter. Oh, well, maybe it is you know Shelter. How we, we, were, we were talking before we went to air um, when I walked in here um, Carmel had Jagged Little Pill playing on the I did. stereo. Yes. And we were kind of reminiscing Alanis. about that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Lance Morris set. And uh, I said that around the time that I moved to Australia, that album came out. 97 it, or something. Some, then. Six or seven or something. Yeah. Like that. And that brand new heavies, brand new heavies album, Shelter, that came out. Around, around the, the same, same time. time. Jinx. So it was that album. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was that album. It was Jack and Little Pill <laughs> and, um, and Jamiroquai. Right. Yeah, that was kind of. Okay. Right. kind of that circulation for us. So yeah, that's right. When I, yeah, when I heard you say brand new heavies, I just thought of shelter and that time period in my life. Isn't that you know, cool? cool eh? I love that. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Um, I don't know how that's going to be in another 10 years. If I go and try and look back on a band that that um, reminds me of this time now, Yes, I can't think of, can't <clears> think of something. For me personally. It, you know, True, right. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you've yeah. you've got your um, you've got your new band, brand new heavy sort of influenced. Yeah. Type stuff. Soul so, funk kind of you know just chill sort of you know acid jazz. Yeah. yeah acid stuff. jazz. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm. Um, what sort of gigs were you doing? How often were you playing? Uh we were doing a weekly residency at a cafe. Mm-hmm. I remember it was somewhere in Liverpool. Actually, it was called Rache's. Mm-hmm. There you go. My brain has served me well right now. I just think of bacon when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie, are you Rache, hungry? Bacon. No, I'm not. Do you want me to get no, some are... bacon out no. of my freezer? I have some. No, my I'm boys fine. love bacon. No, no, I'm fine. I can. Um... <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> You said rashes, I thought of bacon. So. <laughs> just like, That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was called rashes. There you okay. go. Mm. There you go. I think they served bacon. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Good on them. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a cool little setup. We just, you know, had keys, yeah. uh, drums, bass, guitar, and, yeah, we, we just loved it. It was awesome. great fun. Mm. Yeah. Now, when did the idea of teaching come about? Oh, well, this local, actually, local it's, you know what, it's actually always been um, hand in hand with uh, performing. So okay. when I was studying singing and dancing, um, <clears throat> I would kind of uh, come to the end um, of the performing arts run, I guess, and then they would, again, based on your ability, uh and, and um, you know, who you were as a person, I guess, they would give you, um, I, I got a job teaching at the same school, which was the Australian College of Entertainment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I started teaching around the same time as um, performing. Yeah, cool. With, uh, well, the Burning Log Theatre Restaurant was, um, yeah, I think I was... I started teaching when I was 16, okay, 15, cool. uh, 17. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The school was at Parramatta, actually started at Parramatta. Is it still there? No. 
Right. No. Um, it's been taken over uh, and, and it's got a new name. Okay. Yes. So, mm. yeah. You also taught at AIM, is that right? Yes, I did, mm-hmm. yeah, for so how, a few years. How did that come about? Well, again, my mentor and guardian angel on this earth, Jennifer Murphy and Spud Murphy yeah. um, from the Burning Log, uh, were, um, yeah, presented me with the opportunity to teach there. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. So I uh, started in the musical theatre um, department and then crossed over to the contemporary um, department as well. Yeah. Okay. So are you working to a syllabus, a set syllabus? Um, again, let's think back. Uh, yeah, so there were certain scales that we had to to teach, um, but it was mainly about developing the voice and working on repertoire for uh, their recitals and um, right, okay. yeah. So, um, so yeah, basic. At the time, it was about uh, technique and mm-hmm. singing technique and um, performance. Mm. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's just step back a little bit then. Mm-hmm. Um, who was there to teach you that that stuff early on? Or did you, I mean, um, you have a naturally gifted voice. Was there somebody there like a mentor? Um, was it Jennifer or, or Spud? Were they vocal teachers or did you have a vocal teacher oh, at that stage or were you just sort of okay yeah, yeah so okay this is we will <laughs> I'm just thinking I'm trying to visualize this timeline here yeah I'm um, here to, I'm here to mess you up thank you I, so much you're welcome thank you you knew I was coming yes did I work. did I did know and I <laughs> do you think I even did research on my own <laughs> <laughs> on my own timeline it's yeah, like it's no cool. cool. <laughs> I, sh- I should have um no. no but yes I will I would love to mention um my very first singing teacher oh my goodness was Frances Chambers who was a classical singing teacher now she taught me so much about singing technique I was so reluctant <laughs> I think I was 14. I really didn't want to go, but my mum and dad were like, Carmel, you have to go. You must get singing lessons and you and this girl, this woman has come highly recommended by uh do you remember the cockroaches? That band of cockroaches? Uh I remember that there's a couple of wiggles in that band, yes. isn't there? That's all I know. Yes. And one of uh one of the guys from that band, mm-hmm. we we sort of indirectly knew, so it was word of mouth, uh, that he was having lessons f- from uh, Frances Chambers. So I got lessons with her. That was my, um, aside from doing singing at uh, performing art schools, mm-hmm. she was like my one-on-one, you know, private teacher mm. for a few years. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask for, for how long. Uh, yeah. Again, I was in high school, so mm-hmm. I would... Uh, mum, bless my mum, she would come pick me up after high school and then drive me to Beecroft mm-hmm. every Tuesday yep. and, yeah, I would do my uh, classical yep. lessons. Yep. And, um, yeah, so I think I was a bit of a, <laughs> I was a bit of a favourite. She, I, I ended up you know, having a really lovely relationship with her because um, she she did a lot for me. Um, but I just remember thinking, I don't want to sing classical music, mm. Mum. And I have total respect for classical music, but I just remember thinking, you know, at the time I was into Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston yep. and I just wanted to sing, you know. Yep. And I, <laughs> you yep. know, I wanted to belt out. Whitney Houston tunes. Yeah. So it's like, yep. And I was learning classical pieces. Mm. <laughs> but, yep, total respect for that decision from mum and dad because, um, yeah, again, it taught me a lot. That, she taught me a lot. That's mm. great. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So, because I bounced back, I'm going to get back to where we were. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened after AIM? 
Well, oh, okay. So during we are but we are bouncing around a bit. But we are. We'll work it out. That's okay. Mm. We will totally work this out, Stevie. Mm. We, you know, it's midnight, but you know, we'll. we'll <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. It's not really. Um, um, oh yeah. Okay. I yeah, that's right. I was married at the time, and okay. I was pregnant, so I had to stop teaching. Okay. Um, to have my first child. Okay, so mm. I'll try and I'll try and glue this all together now. Okay. So from the band, <clears throat> the brand new heavies influenced band that was playing the cafes. Yes. Right. So from that point to teaching at AIM or getting married, uh, ooh, where, where are we there? For well, from. Starting my own little band, mm -hmm. uh, we would gig um, for the next year or two. Mm -hmm. And then I started to work my way sort of back into the scene, mm -hmm. working with mates. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, again, early memories would be working with uh, Michael DeFrancesco, on bass, Christo Alexander, um, Antonio, drums. Yeah, there's, there's mm. those cool, cool cats. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, opportunities would come from that, I guess. Yeah. How long were you doing that cafe, Ben? Oh, about, about a year. Mm -hmm. I just remember, um, you know, loving it so much and then, mm -hmm. You love what you do. You work with different people and different musicians and then that sort of leads to working with other bands and I mm -hmm. remember just doing, uh, that's right, I remember auditioning for bands through Drum Media. Yep. Remember Drum sure Media. Do. Oh, sure my do. God. Before smartphones yep. and Facebook and Instagram, there yep. was Drum Media. Yep. You went and got your Drum Media on a That's it. Thursday or whatever it was. Yep. Wednesday, Thursday, open up the classifieds. Yes. Singer wanted. Yep. So, you know, I'd get all the um, the ads and mm -hmm. ring ring around and yep. organise <laughs> auditions and mm -hmm. so go along to auditions and uh, that's right, Reservoir Dogs. I remember just working with a whole diff different um, group of Musicians and different cover bands. Mm -hmm. um, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. Do you remember yeah, that band? I, I sure do. Do you? Yep, sure do. That went for a, a good few years, didn't yep. it? That was a good time. That was a good time. Yep. Were you ever playing in that band? No. 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 Mm. But that that would have been sort of mid nineties, mid late nineties. Yeah. 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 Um. All right. So let's. You you've played with a a fair host of high-profile singers and acts and stuff like that. Uh, who was the first sort of high-profile artist that you worked for? And do you remember that feeling when you got that call? I, again, this was an extension of working at the Burning Log Theatre. Oh, Australia. okay. Yep. So the very last or the second last season that I did, I worked with uh, one of my – Dear friends, Carol Starkey, and um, my, I was very uh, close to Martine Munro as well, who is um, another fantastic vocalist mm -hmm. um, and married to Charlie Hull, musical uh, producer. Right. And Carol and Martine were backing vocalists for the great and mighty Doug Parkinson. Right. Yeah, so cool. They were, I think, the original backing vocalists for Doug, um, and I think this might have been late nineties again or early two thousand two thousands. Yeah, um, there he, he went from two backing vocalists to three, and I remember they called me and said, "Hey, Kami, you know, do you want to?" jump on board as, as uh, the third backing vocalist. And and I just remember being 
so excited again, mm. like that feeling of working regularly um, and making music with such amazing musicians and um, writers and um, creative um, directors, musical directors like Spud mm-hmm. and and Jennifer. So, yeah, it was a very, very cool thing mm. to get uh, to be asked to sing right. BVs with those two powerhouse singers, you know, was that who a, I looked up to. I, you know, they yeah. were, they were, they're amazing, still are, yeah. That's cool. Was that for a, for a tour or a one-off sort of thing or, it was or a, were you actually in the band? I was in the band for a, a little while. Again, we, I remember travelling, so we did do yeah. a, a tour. I think we did WA. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, because I remember accommodation and you know um um and was that your first time yes so that's why you'd remember it yeah so well. that's yeah. right yeah and again I was I think a teenager yeah um, cool or early early 20s so yep um yeah it was it was a very exciting thing for me um and and also, you know, having strict Italian parents, mm. uh, it was pretty cool being the eldest of um, three girls mm-hmm. and, and and getting the okay to, you know, right. to uh, with, um, you know, a bunch of musicians and Doug Parkinson. So it was very cool. Right. Yeah. Just let me bounce back on that. Let's, let's actually, let's put a mark here yeah. so we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so I know, so, so you I know. know where to come back to. All right, I see the mark. Yeah. Um, now, with you just saying, then you had strict Italian parents. Did were they supportive of your um, choice to become like a full time musician? That's a really good question. Um, y- you know what? They've been pretty supportive um but at the same time being a girl uh and being one of three girls and you know we're daddy's little girls and daddy and dad is a (laughs) I don't call him daddy anymore um but he was fiercely protective um of us and still is so it was you know again having not much experience in the music business. Mm. It was, it would have been really tough for them, you know, young um, and inexperienced in life and, uh, you know, entering into the world of, (laughs) you know, what they probably thought was, uh, you know, a bit of, you know, rock and roll sort of life. Lifestyle type yeah. thing. So it would have been really yeah. tough for them. Yeah. Yep. But uh, no, they, they came around. They they came around because they saw it was what the jobs that I was doing were professional, um, yeah, right. professional jobs and yep. um, they trusted the people that I was working with, Spud and Jennifer and um all of all of the associations I I had were um, they were all respectful um, um, and respected industry professionals. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. they they did jump on board and were really supportive. And yeah, I, I owe them a lot because you know all of the singing lessons and driving to yeah. you know dance concerts, singing concerts. Um, yeah, so it was very, yeah, very lucky that they did jump on board and mm. um, five years later here I am still doing it all. You That's know? great, yeah. That was a joke, Stevie. <laughs> you didn't get my joke. It no, was a did. bad joke. This is a serious podcast. This is a serious yeah, podcast. We don't laugh no, we don't. <laughs> five years. <laughs> five years. No, I Come got on. it. It's I... actually um, nearly 30 years going into, yeah. Yep. That was a bad joke. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you come back from the the Doug Doug tour or the Doug band thing. Mm-hmm. Did you did you know that was going to end? Was that for a short 
period of time? I didn't actually know. No, yeah. I just I just remember again feeling very excited to be a part of that yep. musical um, adventure. It was just the, the you know working with the greatest musicians and mm-hmm. singing and who fantastic was, who, music. Who was in the band at that time? Do you remember? I. I don't really remember. Mm-hmm. I just remember because I was part of the the backing vocals. Uh, actually, no, I do remember. Part of me mm-hmm. um, that would be uh, Bettison, John. Oh, Bettison. John Bettison. Okay, yeah. You know him. I don't know him personally. I know, but who you he know is. of him. Yep, yep. Yeah, he mm-hmm. was in the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie Hull. He was the MD for uh, Doug at the time okay. as well. When I was um, working with Doug. Yep. Yeah. Um, now. You're actually playing with Doug again now. Yeah. Right now, yes. 2019. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been playing with Doug this time around? I I remember this, Stevie. I have an answer <laughs> for you. I definitely have an answer. Right. Uh, it was 2015. So he okay. he um, started a, a new show or created a new show which was um, in honour of Joe Cocker because it was just after he had okay. passed. Mm-hmm. So, um, yep, his his idea was to um, honour his memory and music and legacy. So um, Martine had moved up north with um, Charlie and out of Sydney and um, I was, again, fortunate enough to uh, jump on board mm-hmm. with that tour so I've been touring with um the fantastic Doug Mm -hmm. Dougie um since 2015 very cool with the Joe Cocker show yeah that's great yeah and that's that's Australia wide yeah we've been um we've been actually last week we were in Canberra Mm -hmm. again uh yeah so around the country it's Mm. been great fun Mm. good fun that's cool. Mm. Um, all right. Well, let's um, let's talk a bit, a little bit about your singing school now. So you've created your own singing school, the Singing yeah. Room. Yes. When did you come up with that? And um, yeah, tell us a bit about it. Um, I it was after I'd had my second child, and um, I just thought to myself. I should, um, I'd moved into the inner west by this stage um, from the northern beaches Mm. and I was getting phone calls from friends just saying, you know, do you teach, are you teaching anywhere, are you you teaching, can you teach from home or can you come to us? So I just thought I should just start, um, I'm going to just start my own little business and um, was inspired again by my mentors and who taught me and just working for different um, people in the industry um, and feeling like, again, you know, after you have children, or for me personally, it was, um, you know, you sort of, the confidence kind of chips away a little bit uh, just through um, not working as much. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah, there was, I, I started working again and, gigging and um, getting my voice back into shape and um, so yeah just started my own little thing thought of the name Mm -hmm. and just thought yep I'm gonna just do it that's great yeah so um, and I've uh, yeah I've been going since 2015 yeah now you're an accredited vocal coach is that right yes right so how does one go about becoming accredited to be a vocal teacher? What sort of I'm, – I'm just asking for myself. Yes. Yes. Um, do you want lessons? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Would you like some lessons? No, well, well – My studio is just over there. We can, we can – uh... <laughs> No, no, I'm, 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 I'm beyond lessons. Um, no, I'm just curious as to, um, yeah, what's involved in becoming accredited. You don't have to give away trade secrets here. I'm just curious. No, um, no, I'm happy to how, how share my 
um, experience with um, singing and uh, the technique of singing because I love it. Great. Um, still very passionate about it even, you know, 25 years later. Mm. Yeah, I just just love it. Um, and I'm really, really into and, and passionate about vocal health um, with the students that I teach and for myself still um, working in the industry, I want to protect and look after my instrument as well as I can. Mm. Um, so I think I was working for the Muscat Sisters at the time and that's sister, sister to sister. Sister to sister, yeah. I was doing a little bit of teaching work for them mm-hmm. and um, having a little bit of knowledge on um, vocal technique and the speech level singing method. I don't know if you've heard of that, which is um, all really nerdy sort of mm-hmm. stuff for, for singers. But um Again, that was that was what I was taught speech level singing. Yep. So um, um, and self taught too. So I'd, I'd had lessons from Francis Chambers, who was my classical teacher, mm-hmm. who set the foundation for you know really strong technique in singing. Mm-hmm. And then going to Bob Tasman Smith, bless his soul. Um, he was also my teacher mm-hmm. for many many years while I was at the Burning Log, and after that. Mm-hmm. Um, he was again another mentor for me um, mm-hmm. as a as a singer vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, so taking really sort of strong interest in that technique of mm-hmm. singing and method of singing. Um, I would buy his books and you know um, buy CD booklets and just study that sort of stuff at home. Mm-hmm. Um, after working for the girls, I noticed how, you know, um, some of their students would come in and they'd have these really fantastic mixed voices or mm. connected voices mm. um, and just, you know, gave them credit for that. I was just so impressed with that. So mm. um, they told me about IVA, and uh, which is the... Um, Institute for Vocal Advancement, which is mm-hmm. um, uh, a world, um, uh, it, it's based, I think, in Canada, mm-hmm. um, and you, you basically study online and do webinars and that kind of thing, and mm-hmm. there are different levels and stages. Um, I managed to only, I did I did the student, um, student teacher level, mm-hmm which was two years. I remember feeling really proud of myself because I had a little little bub at the time and, mm-hmm. you know, it, all the webinars were based on um, US time. So it was oh, like right. <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night and, you know. You're probably already awake. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I would be, but yeah. uh, otherwise it was like, uh, you know, setting the alarm and hitting snooze a thousand times. Right. <laughs> Before you know, feeling awake, and then yep. yeah. So I would I'd studied um, for about two years, um, just real basic speech level um, singing techniques, and loved it. Just loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were yeah they they inspired me, um, the girls yeah, mm. and so I did that, and then. Uh, brought that experience and that knowledge to my my little humble little studio, and yes. and I've just been going with that, right. um, or pretty strong with that, and other obviously other techniques that I know of, right. um, and pass that on to my my gang. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I've been mm. struggling with my voice in the smoke bushfire smoke. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking driving in today, that would be a question I'd like to ask you. How Have you noticed a change in your voice or are you having to manage your voice to kind of deal with this bushfire smoke I tell that's you, kind of crippling Sydney at the yeah, moment? Yeah, I tell you what, I, I've like I said, I've just moved and this place is really open and I've got lots of windows. I definitely... Any other summer would keep everything open, mm. but 
this summer. It's just been okay. you've just got to close everything up and, uh, yeah, unfortunately I don't have an air conditioner but just, yeah, closing everything up and um, staying as hydrated as possible. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But, but just you just have to stay away from it, I think, mm. um, until it passes. It will pass. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I realise that. Yeah, I don't did, you think it will? Well, I'd like to think so. Yeah. But, I it's mean. Just, lo- Mother Nature's just going. Lightning strikes. This morning started 12 new fires. So No. Yeah, so, I mean. You know, you I, don't know do you have the fi- I don't know if you have the fires app. I do, but I didn't get that you just notification. Look. Oh, wow. Yeah, because well, okay. um, you can set your mm. your areas as well. You can set your, um, like, where your house is or such and such, or oh, your wow. zones. Right. You and, um, are kidding. Through the day, all these things pop up, new fire in your zone, and, you know, it's, it's crazy. Near you? Oh, no, no, not so much. I've got I've got my zone set, like, my work, my house, my wife's work, my mum and dad's place, and my wife's mum and dad's place. Wow. Um, just so we're alert to any sort of fires that pop up in the areas, but they're, they're popping up all the time. Yes, this is every true. Every day. But, I mean, they, That's true. it seems like they, they've got control of a, a bunch of them, you know. Yes, so, but yes. Yeah. Pardon me, that is not, I'm not trivialising no, no, um, no. the seriousness of the fires. But, yeah, no, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, I was not aware there were more. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah it's just going to be one of those, it, it'll, mm, I remember years ago living on the farm, mm. uh, growing up on a farm, mm. Rose Farm, my dad was a Rose Farmer. Mm. He he built all of the igloos mm. Um from the ground up, you know, and we were on about eight or nine acres. Mm. And I remember the hail, massive hailstorms, probably mm. the 80s or mm. the 90s. Mother Nature was doing her thing back then mm. and just the devastation that caused for my, my dad um, as, as a provider and a businessman that just, yeah, it just... Oh, you mean tore like that would the, decimate the, the crops? Yeah, that it kind just of thing. Oh, shit. it just tore the um, igloos to shreds. Yeah, right. you know, so you're talking really thick industrial um, right. strength mm-hmm. plastic. Yep. that the hail just ripped, mm. ripped to shreds. Mm. Yeah. So yes, I. But how do we get there, Stevie? Doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> The fires. Uh-huh. So protecting, protecting yeah, your voice. Your, your voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, just keeping everything closed. Yeah. Fair and right. just Common s- sense, trying to they. stay. But it's, you know, for some venues that, that are outdoors, it's like yeah, that, you've that's, got to. Yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking. Mm, yeah. You, have you, you, have you encountered to, a problem yet? I haven't yet. Okay, right. I've been touch wood, very lucky. Mm-hmm. So, no, I haven't. Mm. Um, um, now, with your singing school, do you currently or have you had students come through that I, I have just blown you away and could potentially be the next, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Has there been yeah. that person come through or is there that person at the moment? I tell you what, mm. I've I actually just been to the 2019 School Spectacular. Yep. And one of my students was um, one of the featured um, vocalists oh, wow. in this year's production. So I'm so, so proud of Man, him. Man, that'd be a trip. Carl mm. Van Well is his name, ladies and gentlemen, so look out for him. He's going to he's gonna be a very big star, I believe. Mm. He's very, very talented young, young cat. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Do you believe there's a clear pathway for for the young singers these days to be able to get on a stage into a band do gigs do you think there's that pathway these days maybe that we probably took for granted back in our day because there was a lot more of it that's a great question too um well, the the scene is changing, isn't yeah, it? That's, that's why it's I definitely think. changing. Um, DJs, um, 
are a, a big thing as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, you, you want to hope that live music will always be, mm. you, you want to just hope that that's, you know, um, musicians will keep playing and, um, and, and venues or um, restaurants, clubs, whatever, will support live music. Mm. You, you just want to hope yep. that that, you know, um, uh, that sustains. Yeah. 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 I hope so. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I think it's easy, maybe easier now. What do you think? Like with YouTube and yeah, you know, um, um, the internet and social media. It, it is easier, which means there's a hell of a lot more people doing it. Yeah, that's true too. So yeah, you know, that's how that's you, the thing. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. How do you become a standout? You know. So it. Yeah, mm. it's probably that little bit harder, isn't it? Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I just asked the um, question, maybe you – is, you know, school spectacular, is that kind of a, a way that will um, – sorry, I forgot his name. Carl, yeah. That will potentially open some opportunities for Carl? Uh, yeah, I, I mm. think so. Mm. I, I think so. He's also at um, – uh, Newtown Performing Arts College. Okay. So okay. Uh, hopefully he's presented with more opportunities through um, through that school. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, th- programs like um, uh, I think it's New South Wales, I could be, I must check with my students, but some of them do uh, New South Wales singers mm. uh, programs. Um, there's probably so much out there that I'm not even aware of mm. um, in terms of uh, opportunities for young performers. Um, right. uh, I'm still learning myself, yeah, you know, about it all. But, mm. um, um, yeah, I, I think it, it would be a little bit harder, but working um, or studying or training um, would hopefully lead to other opportunities yeah. for musicians, yeah. do you think? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mm. Mm. Um, I hope so. Now, <clears throat> being a musician and also being a mother, mm. um how do you find that balance? How do you make that work? Um, I, To be really honest, I've just gone through a big sort of life change um, in terms of family structure. So um, is that too candid maybe? I'm not sure. But that's up to you. Yeah. It's um, completely up to you. So well. that that's kind of um, uh, it, it's – it's hard. I remember it being hard when my um, my youngest was little, but they're older now, so it's it's kind of easier, a little mm-hmm. bit easier. Mm-hmm. And um, again, being Italian and having lots of family around, okay. um, they they're pretty supportive, and um, yeah. Um, no, I'm managing. I That's think good. I'm managing. I think. <laughs> I hope I am. Yeah, because it can be very, very challenging. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Mm. Mm. Just having the energy, even. Oh, yeah. Late nights. Right. That's why coffee is yeah. my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been like a standout gig? For you, stand out band or performance, or um, yes, I've uh, I've done oh, I've I've sung backing vocals for um, a few international artists mm. when they've come mm-hmm. here for the Mardi Gras. Oh, cool! Yeah, so and the artists um, were Chaz Bono, and it was just after his um, whole 
sex change thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was very very cool mm -hmm. working with him and um, uh, Courtney Act. Yep. And um, Jake Shears from the Scissor Sisters. Oh, cool! That was a really cool gig, Stevie. Yeah, it was really really great and. You know, um, he used all uh, local musicians. So Sydney, Sydney, it was a whole Sydney team except for his MD. Mm. And um, we rehearsed, you know, a few days in a studio um, somewhere in uh, the inner west and did the performance at the Beresford mm -hmm. in Darling yeah. Hurst. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was a real... Rock and roll, good time. That was really cool. He, yeah, yeah, it was so much fun. Awesome. Yeah. Do you keep in contact with any of those people? No, it's no. It's not really how it works? Um, for some it might. For some it might, yeah, yeah sure. Definitely, but um, no. <laughs> yeah. I just, no, I've not really kept in touch with them. Maybe with um, Jake Shears, MD, Sort mm. of connected with him on social media, but yep. you know, mm. not really. Mm. Yeah, That's good. Mm. and Christine Anu and Dami Im, they're uh, you know local, um, uh, amazing, amazing vocalists. Mm -hmm. So that they're they're fantastic gigs as well. Mm. Doing BBs for those, right? Those, and you're still those like, girls. You're still singing for occasionally. Them. Yeah, mm. yeah. What's your main gig at the moment? Main gig would be having the studio teaching okay. yep, and yep. Um, Doug's gig. Okay. Because he's got another little show up his sleeve or concept up his sleeve that he's going to launch soon. And oh, that's cool. So we're that's going to be cool because that again is another fantastic band. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Um, I just, yeah, I'm loving working with that band. It's they're incredible. Um, so that's that's probably the main the main gig. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. And I started my own little thing too, Stevie. That's soul play. Yeah, soul yeah. play band. So we're just um, just trying to you know kick that off and get get my own um, gigs and yeah. So hopefully 2020. Um, we'll get you know more more work. That's cool. Is yeah. that um, is that just a duo or you you uh, you got duo trio? We've yep. got different um, um, outfits that we can. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. So we That's great. corporate stuff, mm. public gigs. Mm. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing more with that, and hopefully uh, a little bit of. Writing next year, mm -hmm. which I've not done in years. So oh, so hopefully. Have, so have you have you ever recorded? Have you recorded any of your and, and released any of your own stuff? I've not released any of my uh, own oh, right, music, okay. but I've um, I've written a couple of tunes mm -hmm. and did this um, probably the early so two thousand and one or something two thousand one two thousand and two mm -hmm. years ago. That's a long time ago. My mm -hmm. goodness me. And I yeah. So I haven't really. Uh, written. Oh, since. so you've lied. You've lied then, because have you I lied to you? You've only been in this game for five years. You said. Oh my goodness me! Gotcha. I am busted. Gotcha. I'm big time busted. <laughs> what is going to happen? I have to go into that naughty corner over there, don't I? Yep. Yep. And Santa will not be bringing me any <laughs> toys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, that's cool. That's exciting. <laughs> you've got some working on some music. Yeah, that I will, mean, you, will be you, cool. Yeah, I mean. We were talking before about how it is easier for um, people to get their stuff out there. So that's definitely like, um, you know, for someone like yourself established um, and you've got a very unique voice, I think, great, a fantastic voice. Thank you. That you might be able to cut cut through the shit, you know what I mean, yeah. once you release your music. So. Oh, thank you. Mm. So that's something Even maybe early 2000s to, to be able to put something together would be quite expensive, whereas these days maybe not so much. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, 
and and you know it's just just about creating being creative mm. and working with people or musicians that are your mates I yeah, think, that's, that's it. I think yeah. the older I get the more I realize that's re- that's kind of really important yeah. um, when you've got especially when you've got kids and mm. you, you're, you're providing you just for haven't, them. Just haven't got time for bullshit. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, not at all. And that's a bit of a uh, life sort of um, motto, I, I guess. Yeah. Because mm. um, you want to come home and you want to be the best for your kids. So, you know. Yep. Yeah. So exactly what you're talking you about. You know? Mm. Yeah. So yeah, making music with mates is a is you know important. I think yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All good. Beep. Um, well, on that, I think that's a good way to finish it. Um, oh, I was ju- you know just as I'm getting warmed up. You're starting to, mem- to I, remember all I'm those. Start, ca- I can I can list fill in all every, those gaps. Yep. Yep. The right. timeline. Right. We could really be here. <laughs> Till three o'clock in the morning. No, I've got, I'll just I'll just go home. My and, brain's on fire now. I'll just go home and just edit. <laughs> do this four hour edit. It's gonna take. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have we been talking for four hours? No, really? That's how long it's gonna take me. Oh to, my god. To to it, cut it all up and move it. No, I'm kidding. Oh god. No, no, shit, no, shit, no. no it's all good. Man, because it's been fun talking. I want to talk some more now. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, we'll do a part two one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um, can come to you. <laughs> sweet as. Um, or I can bake a cake. I love making a cake. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, Carmel Masiti, did I get it right? Yes. Got it right, eh? Yeah, awesome. I, give me a high five for yeah. that, brother. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, thanks for coming on the podcast. It was great to talk to you. Great to meet you and um, wish you all the best Stevie. for everything you're doing and Awesome. Thank you. You're a legend. Sweet as. You are a legend. Thank you. Shining mm. light on so many uh, musicians and, um, you know, important people in our industry who are, you know, keeping it alive. So mm. that's I thank you. I thank you. And and I'm going to go listen to all 5,000 of your podcasts <laughs> now, okay? Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs> awesome. All Thank right. you for having me. All right, Carmel. Have a good Christmas. Thank you. You yeah. too. All right. Catch Bye. Up. See ya.